Welcome to They Tried to Bury Us. My name is Tamar Katan. I'll be your host. I'm a comedian, a writer, and an actor. I was born in Egypt and moved to America when I was just a kid, so I'm very proud of being an immigrant. And ever since I started doing comedy, I've met more and more immigrants and I have found more and more amazing stories. And that's what this podcast is all about. Each week, I'm going to have a new guest. They're going to sit down and share with us their American origin stories. And we're going to get to know each other better. And we're going to find out that we're all just the same. So tune in each week. Tell every single person you know. And thanks for listening. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of They Tried to Bury Us. I'm Tamara Katan, and with me as always is my co-host... Kiyuchi Katan. Thanks, Mom. You're getting really good at that. Yes, I'm your mama. You are my mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not just my mom. You're, you're my momager. <laughs> I inherit everything for you. Not You don't inherit from me. I inherit it from you. Well, you stop using the word inherit. It makes me think of money, and then it makes me... Oh, you, uh, it's okay. It me, <laughs> no, genetic. Gen, genetic. Genetics. Yeah. Yeah, I have inherited your genetics. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad for that. Uh, but th- seriously, you've th- been th- like my momager this week. You've, you've gotten all these people to vote for me. I'm in the... Uh, I'm in the finals for the K Rock April Foolishness thing. Where oh, I'm a so comic- proud of you. And listen, if you got it, I will be excited. If not, You're I'm with so me. proud for lots of people vote for you. That's true. It was really nice. And you see the love and encourage and say good words about you and make me feel humble. I did a good job with you. You did. And a I'm good so job. proud Thank of you. Thank you very much. That's yeah. really nice of you to say. And I'm sitting next to somebody here so special. Well, you take I think. it easy. I'm, okay. I'm going to introduce okay. him in okay. a second. Okay, okay. She, she's Relax. taking over. You guys, she's taking over. Uh, well, I well, no, I just wanted to say thank you very much for that. Like, it's you've gotten so many people to vote for me, and I didn't ask you to do this. You're like a Chris Jenner. Oh, uh, well, I have to say thank you to everybody working Oak, <laughs> Oak Creek, they did good They're job awesome. for you. Yeah, well, oh it's so God. nice of you. Yes, thank you. And and even if I don't get it, I'm, I'm really stoked, you know, to just be in the top 10. And, but you will. Yeah, you got you will. Well, thank you very, yeah. very much. So, thanks for setting me up for heartache. But speaking of, uh, I'm just kidding, mom. I'm totally yeah. kidding. But listen, uh, I got another great uh, a message from someone and I wanted to read it Yeah. because it has to do with you. Oh, if wow. that's okay. Uh, someone wrote us and, and here's the bummer about uh, the reviews that we get. Um, sometimes you can't always, you can't respond to people. So I'd like to read them on the air. Uh-huh. So this one said, hi, Tamar. Ahlan. Ahlan is uh, Egyptian uh, for, uh, hey, yeah, like, hi, what's up? Yeah, or welcome. Hi, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it is kind of a welcome it's, thing. Uh, yeah, like right. welcome. Okay. Yeah, uh, which I thought was really cute because she's not uh, an Arabic person, but she's not. She's oh. dating an Egyptian, oh. so it was really cool that she said that. Um, I've been listening to your comedy for some time and recently came across your podcast. I just want to write and let you know how great it is, how much I appreciate the perspective, and how I can't wait to hear more each week. My partner is a Coptic Egyptian immigrant alien status according to the government listening to you and other people who share pieces of his culture just allow for me to feel closer and understand more and more it makes any differences easier to understand and helps build my knowledge on some of what he may experience as an immigrant overall i think it brings us together that's so nice right very sweet isn't that great i thought that was really really super cool and then um and then some people wrote that um whenever you talk about texas or talk about the uh, returning the necklace i bought you Uh, that they think it's really funny uh, (laughs) by the way i met somebody yesterday i helped him a golf shop and um, I asked him he because he's going home and I said where is home have a safe trip home he said I'm from Texas I said oh oh I cannot say I'm from Texas because <laughs> <laughs> he, he lives in the place that you're pretending yeah, to be yeah, from yeah but I told That's him the hilarious. story and he said well you fit with us anywhere which is very sweet That's of That's really nice. Well speaking of things that are really nice uh-huh. I want to introduce our guest but before I do I'm going to embarrass him a little bit. Well, go for it. Now, when I first got into comedy, somebody the the advice that I got and ignored the most was uh, not. I didn't mean to ignore it. I just didn't realize how big it was because uh-huh. it was such a sm- short piece of advice. And they said, "Work hard and be nice." 
Yeah. And that, that's what they said. And that, I think that's the toughest thing. Very it's good. a very emotional business. It's a very personal business. Um, there's no Google map to figure out how to make it in comedy. Mm-hmm. And it's not like you're trying to be a great accountant where somebody goes, oh, that's wrong. And you go, my math was wrong. Mm-hmm. When you, if someone doesn't like your comedy, they're basically saying, I don't like you. <laughs> so it's hard to get, you know, there's a lot of rejection in comedy and there's a lot of, there's a lot of jealousy. I, uh, there's a lot of people who aren't jealous people normally, but comedy makes them jealous. And, and, and there's a lot of like, just, there's a lot of haters out there. Yeah. So whenever I keep thinking of that work hard, be nice. I don't think there's any other comic I've ever met who, who embodies those words like work hard, be nice. I'm so proud of this guy. It's very rare that I say that I admire someone who started comedy be- after me. Mm-hmm. Right. But th- I absolutely have so much respect for this guy and I love his comedy. I think you're so fucking funny, dude. So everybody, welcome to the podcast. Jason Chenny. Oh, hi, Jason. Uh-oh. My friend, Jason Chenny. Oh, very good. Dude, on, I'm so fucking proud of you. I got to tell you that. Like you won the World Series of Comedy after I won the World Series yeah. of Comedy. And I knew you were going to win it. I was rooting for you the whole time. But since then, dude... If if there was such a thing as comedy steroids, I'd make you pee in a cup. Because ah. <laughs> you, you're so, I think you're so funny, you're so talented, and yet you're the nicest fucking guy. Dude, you gave me a crazy intro that I'm gonna bomb this podcast. Because <laughs> of how good the intro he gave me. Yeah. That was no, it's true. Good. I mean that. It, it has you know, to be true. I mean that a so hundred. Nice. I mean that a hundred percent. Thank you, man. And yeah. it's seriously same to you. I never heard anybody said anything. You know what I mean? Remotely, even close to like, oh, he's all right. It's always like, oh, dude, Tamar's the nicest guy. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Always. And you embody that. that as well. Thanks, dude. Dude, positively- you brought me a chocolate bar. Who comes to a podcast and brings a chocolate bar? That's so nice. You know what? I feel like in your <laughs> culture, you guys, don't, don't you guys, when you go to somebody's house or they invite yeah. you yes. to do something, yeah. you bring something. Yeah. Well, that's really nice of you to even think sweet. that. Yeah. For your age you, and you grow, you grow up in America to do that. I don't. Wow. I didn't grow up. You didn't grow up in America. Grow up in this is a podcast Taiwan? about immigrants, mom. Oh, okay. But <laughs> I thought you were the co-host, mom. No, What's I, going on? Hey, hold on. I'm not stupid. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But, yes, ma'am. Uh, Nobody speaking, would say that. I, I didn't. Um, hold on. <laughs> okay, don't okay. laugh at me. Never. Uh, maybe, never. Maybe you come ten years old or something because your English is so good and you look half American, half Chinese or no Taiwanese. Taiwanese. Don't take guesses at people's national. <laughs> Nowadays, mom, you can't take guesses. This is the best. But it's still, it's a cute face. I don't care where you're from. It's a cute face. I love he it. He does have a good Look face. Look at the smile. Oh, Look at the teeth. Oh, and the smile. I love oh it. Oh my god. Okay. My mom gives these crazy compliments, dude. Yeah. I got to tell you, this one time, we were in Orange County together, uh-huh. and she lived in Huntington Beach, and at the time I was living in Newport Beach, uh-huh. and she goes, "I want you to run this half marathon with me." Wow. Oh, he. She oh, yes. invited you. Yeah. We did. Wow. And we did. at the time, I, I was like a weightlifter, but I did no cardio. But I'm like, if my mom could do it, I could do it. Yeah, different animal. So I, I went drinking the night before, oh, wow. and then it rained, so I thought the marathon wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And then I show up, or, or my mom calls no, me. I called And she yeah. goes, Tamara, where are you? At 6 a.m., she calls yeah. me. And I've been drinking till 3 in the morning. And I go, Mom, it's raining. And she goes, yeah, it doesn't matter. They're still going to have the race. And I'm like, really? And she goes, yeah, get over here. So I got in my car. I get over there. I'm so hungover, man. And and then we get there. And a guy from Orange County News Network, like this cable channel, walks up. He's a black guy. And my mom goes, oh, my God, you have great teeth. <laughs> That's it. In the middle of the interview. <laughs> you know, when you smile, you know, your teeth is so, it's very nice, very important. Yeah, nice. it's great. Yeah. It's just I love when you compliment people's yeah. teeth. It's yeah. such a. <laughs> it's, it's like good. I'm compliment something that's inside your head, <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> so, but that, but I won't forget that compliment because it, most people they go, oh, nice, like hair or nice, hair, I don't know, like n- nice nose uh-huh. or whatever or the eyes, but teeth. You can't forget teeth. I, I, it's now, specific. every time yeah, you brush specific. your teeth in the like, morning or at night, Mrs. Kadea oh, likes kitty, it. call me yeah, kitty, kitty. Okay, oh, kitty. kitty. She said, oh, nice is. So yeah. twice a day you will remember yeah. me. Exactly. That's a blessing, okay? It is so, a blessing. Thank so you. So you brought up Feel the perfect great. subject, uh-huh. the, the, the question of where Jason's from and when he came here. So okay. Jason, what, why don't you tell us where you immigrated from and how old you were when you came to America and what life was like back home? 
Okay. Uh, well, that's a lot of. I'm gonna try to. Um, I'm so I came here when I was in eighth grade, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm from Taiwan originally. But that's the thing. I want to clear that up too because. Um, Originally, Taiwanese people are from China. Yeah, you know. But then I literally googled what a country means. It just means they have their own government. Yeah, you know, we have our own government, and yeah. and uh, and and yeah, and, and yeah, we left China about two hundred years ago. But people, <laughs> people will still go. Oh, but isn't Taiwan just part of China still? Mm -hmm. Though that, that's like a really. I don't know how to answer that. That's like. That's like if I'm like, well, aren't you just part of your dad's ball sack still, though? <laughs> it's like half disrespectful. Like, your answer will be the same as mine. It's like, yeah, kind of, but you left because you felt constricted, just like we did under yeah. communism. And know? I love that you talk about this in your comedy. Yeah. Like, not a lot of people do. It's not an easy thing to make funny, but you do. You make it funny. And you, um, you, because a lot of people don't know. And a lot of people don't care. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, especially they don't in America. Care enough. Yeah, especially in America. You know what it is? America is so big that we forget we're an island. Yeah. But we are an island, just a really really big one. huge 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 yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah and I, I i it's not like i'm super super proud of like being taiwanese i am proud but i'm not like oh man like you know i gotta be but i kind of just want to introduce people to a culture that not many people know about and also that's where i'm from you know yeah of yeah. course also good for you America. good yeah. for you yeah. yeah you should keep your blood and culture going on you know very yeah. important and it's good for it's good for him good for people that don't know to know yes it's great that the world is big uh -huh. it's awesome that the yes. world is big i used to have this joke in london mm. where i'd say if london was a luxury apartment with a view of the world america would be a mansion with no windows mm. and that's what it oh, is that's we, a good one we have the best passport in the world yeah. and it's the most underutilized Oh, is that a is that statistic? Oh, 100 percent. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like the majority of Americans don't even have passports. There are people that would cut off their left arm to have an American passport. See, that's what I'm saying. Like so some, sometimes I feel like because I've been living in L.A. for the past like year and a half, you know, but comics travel. But still, I feel like if I'm living in this place, I feel like this this is a bubble. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you don't go out of this place, you get in you get sucked into this place and the subcultures here yeah. in 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 LA and you don't really you lose touch a little bit 100%. with like Asia or like middle of America, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know, but I just I, like today earlier I was thinking about that. Yeah. Cuz we talk a lot about like cuz of course it's LA and you, you, there's a lot of entertainment cuz billboards everywhere it's yeah. entertainment. But yeah. in Taiwan it's not like that. It's like food or like you know what I mean like grocery <laughs> store or like yeah that's true karaoke thing yeah or like you know what i mean it's yeah. never like a billboard of a of a movie tv you know what i mean totally oh. true it's funny like every, people almost forget every city influences you yeah and you don't it's it, it's like a whisper of influence yeah like in northern california right i had a friend of mine who said this it was actually an article that he read he mm. said that when you he likes going for walks after he eats dinner yeah and he said when he went for walks for dinner when he lived in Northern California and he would look, you know, at a walking pace would look inside people's living rooms when he's walking down the street. Right. He always saw books in Northern California. You'd always see people's bookshelves Yeah. because Northern California had so many great universities and schools. Uh. And because of the tech sector, all the restaurants, no jacket required because the telecom uh, you know, or the tech industry, people don't wear suits. And then he lived uh. in LA and every time he went for a walk, when he looked in living rooms, he always saw TVs. Wow. So it was a different culture of the city. And then in New York, all the restaurants had jacket required, the fancier restaurants, right. because the financial uh, the financial sector, they all wore suits. So it was like sometimes you, it's good to be aware of yeah. like the bias of each city. Each city tries to influence you in a way and you should – and there's nothing wrong with being influenced by the city and accepting it. Just do it with eyes wide open. So right. you're not like, you but, know, behaving in a way without realizing what you're doing. But that's another thing, like, because you live in and you, you, you're an immigrant immigrant as well. Yeah. And then you travel to somebody and you lived in New York. Mm -hmm. Right. And when those cities influence you, I, like to me, when the cities influence me, it kind of makes me go, well, which one am I? Like, what city am I from? And what um, culture do I adapt? And what habits do I adapt? And. Do you know what I mean? Am I the book in the living room guy or am I the TV guy? <laughs> and and am I like bad? Is it bad to just have the TV or is it bad to just have the books? You yeah. know what I mean? How do you feel about? Yeah, how I, do you feel I about love it? having I love having the options. Yeah. Like I think because I've been in, I love being influenced by a bunch of different things and mm. then making my own thing because I think there's a difference between a DJ and a musician. 
Yeah. A DJ goes, these are the things that I love. But if you have so many different things that you love and you yeah. make this combination of things together, well, now you're, you're a musician too. Now yeah. you're creating something original. I think that's the best way to live. Like, I feel like when we're born, we're like a computer that comes with all this software in it already. Yeah. Like our parents tell us what religion to believe in. Our society tells us what means good and evil <laughs> and all this stuff. And then when you get older, you go, Hey, who put that in my computer? I didn't buy that software. Yeah. It just came with it. So to be able to consciously make a decision, I want this software instead of that software. I want to get rid of this U2 album that came on my iPhone that I never wanted there. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then you customize it and then it just makes life, I think it makes life better. I, mm-hmm. I feel like it too for personally. But then if you go out, like when people are really set on one type of thing, mm-hmm. they'll go, well, what is this? He doesn't, that he's, he's yeah. not, doesn't belong in this thing, you know, and you go to another place and go, well, he's too, you know what I mean? You yeah. don't belong it because you have so many things on your plate you go oh i like this like the musician thing that you're saying you have all these things but you don't like because i'm just speaking of like how i feel it's just i don't feel like i ever belong in one group of yeah thing, you know what i mean that's the one weird thing is i i realized i've always been a traveler mm-hmm. since, like my mom knows like i've traveled to the point where it drove them crazy yeah. but the one negative about being such a traveler is i always miss someone now now well, i have no, no i'm never home now there is no home anymore. Uh, you know, it's like that Socrates thing where he said, I'm neither a Greek or Athenian. I'm a citizen of the world. But the mm-hmm. downside of being a citizen of the world is you're always missing someone. Yeah. You know, you always have a really good friend that you're missing. You always have um, a really good group of people or community that you miss. Right. So there is a downside to being that. Uh, but speaking of these motivations, tell me about Taiwan. What made you, what made you decide or your family decide to immigrate? Oh, yeah. So- and, and what was it like there with... It, it is unusual to have your own country and have people not realize that it's your own country. And I imagine the influence of China was a negative. Was it a negative? Well, some people, I kind of, I think it's kind of like um, the Republican and Democrat, like they both have their pros and cons. Sure. And, uh, um, and yeah, and some people really are, you know, it's, it's the same. And then every year, some Democrat, went, we have both, we have two parties as well. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, one of up them. Up and down. Yeah, up and down. It's always up and down. But uh, but yeah, I feel like right right now, Taiwan, it doesn't really, um, we don't have like, because before when the industrial Re- revolution, we have all the factories. And I talked about it in my act, like we make the best, not, not the best, but we were really into like... Uh, the CPU, the hardware, yeah, and um, and uh, and we would we have a really good quality. But after when China opened up into like um, exporting, then we start because it's so big and it's, it's so yeah. much so much more people that uh, we just lost out on a lot of um, opportunities there. But I I, I love Taiwan because Taiwan is like a modern. It's kind of like Singapore, but but not. R- rich. <laughs> you said something like it was a warm New Yorkish. Yeah, like warm. Yeah, it's like, like New York, but warm. Warm which yeah, sounds because, amazing to me. Yes, as an Egyptian and a Californian, which is like I'm practically half a lizard. Yeah. I like an idea of a warm New York. Yeah. What you mean warm? Warm weather or warm feeling? Both. He said both. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's great. That, yeah. yeah, it's an island weather, so it's humid. Some people don't like it, but I love it. I love the sun. Uh-huh. I don't get enough now, but. uh but w- w- at, at one point, we have the tallest building, the Ta- Taipei 101. I don't know if yeah. you guys sh- – shout out to Taipei 101. <laughs> no, I, it was in a movie. I think there was a movie that had it. In the- yeah, there, it, ha- it was in a several movies, and yeah. then Dubai came up with the bigger one. Oh, yeah, one you, if you want to feel better, I've been to the top of the Burj Al Arab, oh, you did. and you know what the view is like? Like, it's garbage because uh, when you're up there, it's just a view of the desert. Oh, it's yeah, not a great view. That's right. I mean, you can see the ocean. You can see all the way to, yeah. almost to India. But when you look the other way, it's just yeah. desert. Uh, I feel like the view on that tower would look better on the like the 40th floor. Exactly. You see more. Yeah, I think you're if right. You go more of you like, what am I looking at? Right I now? think you're totally right. It was just yeah. Dubai was that's really not- big at, at having these things called the IST. That mm-hmm. was their big campaign push. We want to be the ist, the biggest, the oh. tallest, the fastest. <laughs> yeah. That's what they wanted Dubai wow. to really be about. But I um, mean, it's built on sand. It has to be. It's crazy, you know, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's really crazy. No, but Taiwan, I, I always love the... <laughs> 
you, you know, that because the, our culture is so polite, like I talk about in my act, it's just overly polite. Mm-hmm. And because every time you go to somebody's house, they they make you bow, you know, and um, I you love th- bow. Thank you for everything. Like, oh, that kind of bow. I thought you meant bow like the buns. No, <laughs> <laughs> but that bow too. That bow too. Well, I bow today for everybody in Oak Creek. They vote for you. Oh, that's really it's nice. It's your style. Oak but Creek? I feel, yeah, I feel it's more politely. Yeah. yeah I like it. Right. We, we do a little bit of that in our culture. The hand, we do a hand on the heart, hand, and like, like a little you know, bow. Yeah. But uh, Egyptian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Egyptian. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But, um, Egyptian people, very kind people, by the way. Right. Very kind. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> as a, as a but there. not everywhere. I mean, everywhere I know. you find the good and bad and ugly. Exactly. And beautiful and exactly. all. But yes. as a culture, it's a polite culture. Yes, yeah. But see, like, I, I don't know, like, if that's a... Because in the beginning, I didn't have a choice. That's how I grew up, you know? Yeah. But sure. then when I came came to America, you know, people start roasting each other. I have trouble that. I have trouble doing that now. Yeah. Like, when people roast you, you know? Like... And that's how people bond, right? Yeah. They go, yeah. oh, look at this ugly Well, comedians guy. especially. I mean, yeah. in, the, in the comedian uh, culture, right. in our comedian culture in particular, right. I think there is a lot of, like, make fun of each other, roast each other right. type of a thing. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah, it's different. I feel comfortable with doing it with some people, but yeah. some people, I don't know how to do it. Like, I, <laughs> and, 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 like, to me, like, I don't... I didn't grow up like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It makes me, because if I do it, because obviously when they say something, I have mean things in my head, like for sure ready. Yeah. But I don't know how to deliver it to make it funny. It'll just come out really mean. You know what I think? <laughs> because and it's, that's just rude. Freud even said comedy is a weapon of the underdog right. and roasting is an alpha dog thing. Um, I think some people learn comedy. Dude, you be- don't know. You know a lot of stuff. You quote, <laughs> quoting Socrates, <laughs> Aristotle. Well, Benjamin, I mean, Socrates. Like, like, for me, like I'm part Greek, and part Greek and part Egyptian. Oh, so okay. For me, yes. quoting Socrates is like somebody yeah. quoting Abraham Lincoln. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. He's on Greek coins. Yeah. Uh, he reads a lot. I, too. I do. He I'm a, re- a I'm a reader. Sure. I was an only child, so I did yeah. like books and TV were my siblings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. I think some people learn comedy not in an offensive way. We learn it in a defensive way. Yeah. Like to to make friends, to build bridges, and some people learn comedy as in a, in a more aggressive way. Yeah. And and there's different styles. So just like there's different styles of music, you know, there's heavy metal and then there's classical, That's there's true. pop. And I think same with comedy, but like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, I think some people are like, oh, I'm not into roast battle, but I think I want to learn how to do it. And I'm like, well, it's, yeah. it's up to you, man. Mm. You don't have to be a, a rock musician that has to learn country. Yeah. You could just be like, this is my style. It's not my jam. I don't like the energy. I'm kind of like that too. Right. I don't, I could do it from time to time, right. but it's not, but it's not. It's not my natural state. Right. You know what I mean? It's not the way I use my comedy. And and then it makes me feel like I'm not bonding with the person. Yeah. 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 Because they're like, well, what is this this weird guy not saying anything back to me? (laughs) Sometimes I'll, I'll like, if someone says mean things to me, I'll actually compliment them in an aggressive way. (laughs) I actually did that with you outside of Madhouse with that homeless lady. Dude, yeah, that you you should say that story because that that was like one of the most amazing. You know what? So I was so we were outside and then um this aggressive. I was talking. Who was that? Was it? Was I talking to? I you? think who it was. was it was me. You. We were at Madhouse Comedy Club in yeah, in, in the gas lamp in San Diego. Mm-hmm. It was me, you, uh, Allison Gill. Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to the Muller She Wrote podcast and the Daily Beans. They're amazing. And they just won a Webby. Um, so Allison was with us. And I think there was another uh, another guy that worked at Madhouse that was there. Yeah. But either way, I was talking to the comedian, right? And then this, this a really aggressive... Um, a homeless lady she uh, she wasn't saying anything to me in the beginning but then she start yelling at the person that i was talking to and i was like oh my gosh and then i was i was like moving backwards and then she kind of like was like would you would, you gonna get some too or something oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> something like that and i was like no i don't want any she just started going she's like you ain't talking about nothing why yeah, are you talking yeah. so loud you're yeah. talking about nothing but we're, we're just, just out happy. in the street we're yeah. just having a good time and then Tamara comes out and then she was like, she was just talking to her. She was just like, what, the, what, what's wrong? Really? Tell me what's wrong. And then she's like, you, you not, don't, don't do that. Like you got beautiful hair. You oh, know what I mean? Like, what are you, it. what are you doing? You know oh. what I mean? And then she like roast him again. <laughs> and then like, she said something bad about it. And then he goes, man, look at you. You got a nice ass. <laughs> <laughs> I kept just telling her how pretty she was. Sure, and she, she 
stopped. Yeah, she stopped. She kept going. Like she started laughing and yeah. smiling. I'm like, I'm like, you got a bunch of ugly words coming out of your mouth. What a pretty face. What ugly words? Oh, wow. I'm like, what's wrong with you? But she oh, was God, so nice angry. Hair. Oh, yeah. I, I, she was really that angry. Was at like the time. Ma- oh, wow. That was like magic. That was like magic. What yeah. he did. People respond to compliments. Yeah. Even Compliment. even homeless people. Yeah. Because I was. I'm like, you've got lot, this long, beautiful hair. I'm bald. Why are you? I'm. How come I'm happy and you're mad? I'm like, look at those beautiful yeah. dreads you have. Yeah. And she just like. And then at one point he's laughing. like, I'm gonna use Kitty. He's like, look at your teeth. They're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I did. She did. <laughs> and then that's when I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, she is amazing. And then he he literally was making her laugh, oh. like doing comedy. Oh. And and then um yeah, that was a crazy she thing was to cool. see. She was she so, totally so was awesome. nice after. Yeah. She was really nice after. But I think we could. That's I think that's what the energy of comedy is supposed to do. Yeah. Energy squashes like comedy energy is supposed to squash. Yeah. And it builds bridges. Yes. Like there were guys that used to beat me up until I made them laugh so much that they started saying, I don't want to hit this guy anymore. He's nice. He's That's funny. In, uh, or he's funny. Elementary school. Yeah, elementary yeah. school. Yeah. I used to yeah. use Not joke. now. No, no, no. You no. have to clear it. I learned yeah. to defend myself. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so let me ask. So Taiwan sounds like it, it's a nice place. I actually have a, I grew up with a friend, Roy. Do you remember Roy, Roy Kuo? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A good friend of mine was a guy named Roy yeah. whose parents actually sent him to Arcadia. Mm-hmm. California, which is the school that my parents sent me to after I got jumped by gang members. Yeah. And Roy was a good friend of mine who was living in Arcadia alone. Yeah. His parents bought a house and it was him and his sister going to school. And I think his grandmother ended up moving to America. Yeah. And then at the end of it, he went to USC, graduated USC, and then moved back to Taiwan and took over his dad's business. A lot of immigrants, ta- Taiwanese immigrants, they do that. They do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I came here in eighth grade uh, and I went to a military school in Carlsbad, California. And uh, um, w- with one of my one of, one of my friend who's a really good friend uh, in Taiwan. Mm-hmm. And then he was it was a family friend, a close friend. And then he was coming. He was going to Carlsbad. And then my parents was like, oh, it's a military school. And then I was I wasn't doing good. I was like like a re- Yeah, it was it, I was in. Um, I, I was terrible in school. I had discipline. I stole money out of my mom's purse and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just like, you know, kid stuff. And, uh, and I, yeah, and, I, and I, w- I would go live at the, you know, the PC cafes. Like yeah. I'll be there for weeks because I know the owner. And then I was, I'm always nice to them. And they go, oh, yeah, you could just come. It's fine. Cause it's like, what, like 25 cents for two hours or something. Yeah. But then they're like, you could just come and they'll feed me ramen and stuff like that. But anyways, I, uh, yeah, that's how I got here to just like, oh, discipline and English. It would be a great opportunity. But I loved it because some people would ask me, go, oh, you know, the story that you tell about how your parents beat you and stuff is like, don't say that. Like, if it's not true, don't say that. It's like, dude, I because how nice I think I come off like I've never, you know, what I mean, I just have a nice face that, that, that didn't happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude, I was getting beat by teach every people every person in taiwan gets beat by pe- teachers if your grade is bad like wow. this teacher broke a wooden like stick on my calf this one time wow no but that's, that happens and then yeah. d- my dad beat me again he's like dude you messed wh- how, wh- wh- how'd you get the teacher so angry but that's a, oh yeah. my god so, but when i came to america i was so excited because i always wanted to be in the military and have like a brotherhood thing and yeah. not study were you an only child no, I have a younger sister. Oh, so you never had brothers? Uh, no, yeah, I always wanted a brother, like yeah. an older Maybe brother. That's why. Yeah, yeah I always wanted yeah. it, so I was like, yes, this is. This you have is a the brother best. now. You have Tamer. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. I, I am yeah, your brother. The, yeah. I feel the same way because I was an only child. Mm. I think I've always been attracted to things like that. Like Seinfeld said this thing that I was like, it was really weird. He said this thing that I felt it, like my, my heart went, yes, that's it. Mm. I'd never articulated it, and he said, I never wanted to be famous. I never wanted to be a millionaire. I just looked at comics and said, I want to be one of them. Uh-huh. And like, that was it for me I, because I was by, you know, uh, Egyptian and, and American and Muslim and Jewish and Coptic and, and Greek Orthodox. I, I, I didn't fit yeah. into any one thing, right. but, the, but I, but the one thing that was consistent is all those different groups of people. They all called me funny. Wow. And I was like, that's what I am. That's my nationality. Mm. So I wanted to fit into this like a brotherhood. brotherhood. Yeah. yeah. Same with boxing. It's like this brotherhood. Yeah. You know, it's like only that group of people will understand exactly. each other. Exactly. Yeah. And his share. Like, so I can totally relate to why you wanted to, to do that. And what an interesting way to immigrate too. kind yeah. of to, to go to a country and learn the language and, and 
and and I mean, it was the perfect solution for what you were going through at that age. Yeah, it was perfect. I yeah. loved it. I was really, really thankful. And then the school that I went to, it was really diverse too. Oh, it, it was like black, good. black, yeah, Latino, and all types of Asians, Koreans. And that's when I met Korean. That that's when I met um, the Koreans because I I didn't know about Koreans. Like wow. I, I didn't even know about Korean drama, any of that, because I was in a bubble too. I was in Taiwan, you know. Sure. And then the first time that I interacted with a Korean person was, um, I was in eighth grade and was in history class. And uh, I, okay, I do this thing is just because I don't want to be in class. I'll, I'll like act up in class on purpose so I t- could get kicked out and yeah. march by myself. I've done that. Yeah. I I do that every day, right? Yeah. And this one time in history class, uh, the teacher asked somebody like, uh, like, oh, well, do you, when's the Boston Tea Party? And I was like. The dolphins. The dolphins? <laughs> Swim north. And he was like, hello. Fur, fur. You know, I, did, I, I did those things. And then the Korean guy got really mad. He's like, hey, shut the hell up, okay? Oh. Yeah. And then I turned around. I was like, "Dude, you shut the hell up, dude!" Like, and he was he was held back two years. Uh-huh. And and in Korean culture, if you're even six months older than somebody, you show respect to that person. Yes. Yeah. Like, age is a huge thing to them. And I didn't know that, yeah. so I was like, "Dude, you shut the hell up." You know what I mean? Like, you got held back, dumbass, big head, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just I like in a goofy way. And then he just like he, the thing they do this thing where they like like lick their lips. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna murder you at the, and I was like dude why'd you lick your lips that's gay like and at the time you, you could say you know what I mean you do get those yeah. things but yeah. anyways I don't mean it but um but then he would do that and I got him really angry he's like okay you want, let's fight after class I was like yeah wow. we're gonna fight after class I never I've never fought I always got my ass beat before that I never fought I never threw a punch oh like I may God. have grabbed somebody in the neck one time and go stop oh it's, my god that, Jesse. that's the yeah You're that's the most deep trouble deep trouble right yeah. so and he's like after class oh. and then I, I screwed around the whole class and after class uh he's like okay let's go and that's when I got nervous. <laughs> I, was, I was like, "Dude, this guy's serious." So you were making him more mad. Like you the continued whole to could just screw yeah. around, like yeah. marinating him in rage. Exactly. The whole, <laughs> and I, I love looking at his face. Like, look, look at his ugly, just getting mad the whole time. Oh my god! Like, what are you really gonna do? Because I didn't know that that cult, Korean culture they really execute on like fighting you. Because <laughs> most cultures, <laughs> most cultures don't like Koreans do have follow through. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I, the, he like we went like behind behind the um, behind like our like uh, the, where we sleep like behind this hall, uh-huh. and then um, he's like, were there okay. other kids? No, it, oh, he just Justin, took me. He just wanted me. So much more scary. Oh, dude, oh, I yeah. was so scared, dude. He didn't even want to. Fa- he didn't even want an not, audience. Oh no, they're not like oh, that. That's scary, they're not like dude. that. They don't like get loud, call people out like yeah. that. They're like, let's just that's do it. Scary. Wow, that is scary. Wow. So that's what I learned like to be tougher like because i was really scrawny like i have this mother but and then uh and then we went to the back he's like okay let's go and i was like wait 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 wait." (laughs) i was like wait so what do we what do you mean like i've never been in this situation (laughs) and then he just charged he oh at first he's like take your belt off you know i've never asked because it's we had like in the military we had had, like and then he's like take it off i'm "I'm not not taking it off let's just do it (laughs) and then he just started he just started beating my ass, dude. Oh my he punched God. me in the face, and I got, like, dizzy. I went on the ground. I'm not going to lie. I curled up. I was like, okay, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, well, are you going to keep, you know, messing fuck, fuck around in class? I was like, no, I know. I, I won't do it anymore. <laughs> but then through through that day, like, I start following the Koreans because other people will bully me as well. And um, they really, like, I just always, like, did body shots with them and worked out with them. And then they will kind of, like, protect me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very that, that nice. was the thing. That you was know, my brother. It's a really funny story, but yeah. also like traumatic. Yeah, oh, in yeah, a way. I sure. mean, you, you. This is in America now, and you're yeah, by, you're by here myself. alone. Yeah, yeah. But what's more just traumatic yeah. isn't that. That kind of actually saved me because because before that, it was like a lesson learned almost. Yeah, lesson learned and learned their culture. Yeah. yeah. But but before that, it was like white people, black people, like they would bully me. They like like upper class classmen. They'll sit on me with their knees and just start slapping me. And oh, I was like, stop. Sucks. And then my aunt, who lives in I think Ar- Arcadia or. Part, part, they, they'll 
like every month they'll bring me like some cookies and you're not supposed to so I'll hide it in my foot locker <laughs> and then you can't have that it's a contraband when they do room inspection okay first of all when they do room inspection they throw out all the shirts that that you it like wipe no no um no dust nothing but when they come in I, I face for it and um, like in parade rest, and then they'll take the cookies and crumble it and throw it at my face. Oh my god! Inside, oh. dude, that was my love, dude. Because oh. I didn't have family. <laughs> All I had was the cookie. That's I was so brutal. Dude, I will savor it. I'll be, like take a little piece. I'll be like, oh, oh yes, god. people love me. Yeah. Oh. And then they'll crumble all the and throw it in my face, like stuff like that. Wow. And then nobody. So like the Koreans, they kind of like bullied me, but also took me in. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I would appreciate that. And culture is what I was saying. Yeah. Different yeah. culture. They have black, black people show me the hip hop and stuff. And um, yeah, man. Yeah, different so cultures. So Jason, you came alone to America? Yeah, I came alone. To to they, they just dropped me off. My parents came two years after. Oh, okay. D- d- because they didn't have enough. And, and so from came two years 8th after. to 10th grade, you were by yourself. Yes. And living wow. living on well, campus. They came, and... My parents visited every year. Okay. Yeah. But was so it was like a military style campus yeah, in Carlsbad. Yeah, so Carlsbad. Was it a, was it a Marine Corps Navy. type of? It's called Army and Navy Academy. Oh, and okay. they're. All the TAC officers was in the Marines. Okay, wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's tough love. Yeah, I remember there was a, a friend of mine went to this thing called Devil Pups mm-hmm. that was like a, a Marine based thing. And he really liked it too. Yeah. He said it was, it, it, you know, he got a lot I of it. He, I got a lot out of it. So yes. that's great, man. Like friendship and also. Cause uh, and I we always wore uniforms like yeah. when I was uh, in Taiwan because you know like um, the that's school, just how it is yeah the school in Taiwan was uniform too the uniform too so when I got there it was perfect it yeah. made sense yeah, yeah it wasn't like it, I, it's funny because actually going to a military school probably felt more familiar than yes. if you would have come here and gone to a public school one hundred percent yeah one hundred because I didn't know how to dress myself. I sure. had to figure it out in 10th grade, dude. Oh, that's <laughs> so smart. <laughs> what am I Because I used to get picked on so bad for the way that I dressed. I did too. Like my mom would send me to school dressed too fancy. You know, like kids would show up and like, you know, because in Egypt, they're like, oh, you know, like other kids would go to school in jeans and a t-shirt. I was like in a three-piece suit and rolling luggage. No. <laughs> like they look like they're going to school. I look like I was going to a sales oh, conference no. in Phoenix. I just, you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I got beat up all the time. You start then, passing all cards. I'm <laughs> hammer. Don't, don't you pretend that you didn't do this. Here's I my favorite. Jacket, Here's my sweater, favorite. Sweater, no jacket. No, I'm going to tell you about a time where I got the I got one of the biggest beatings I've ever gotten was because of your fashion sense. Okay. And then, here's what you did. My grandmother me. was visiting, uh-huh. and my grand when we moved to America, I put on some weight. Oh, okay. And my grandma, but my grandmother would send clothes from yeah. Greece. These like really fancy, nice yeah. clothes. Wow. But they were chosen by a grandmother in Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they didn't, they weren't like American fashion. Mm. Yeah. I was, so my mom goes, Tamar, you have to wear these clothes because your grandma is going to be here when you come back from school. Yeah. So you need to wear this to <laughs> school. Happy, oh my you know? God. <laughs> Here's what she put me in. Are you ready for this? Okay. Light brown tan slacks with oh. a boot cut that flares out at the bottom. No. And they were so tight. So <laughs> tight. And then a white sweater with blue elbow patches that were velvet. Yeah. And then and they made first they made fun of me the whole day. They called me Disco Dan. Right? Yeah, that's what I was Disco Dan the like whole Elvis. Thing, right? And then on the bus on the way home, I bent over and the back of the pants ripped open (laughs) and I had a huge hole in the back of my ass. And then this guy laughed at me, a really big guy laughed at me and I went, shut up. And then he goes, what'd you say? (laughs) And he was this huge black kid. (laughs) But at least you have underwear under. At least you have underwear. <laughs> Kitty's looking for the light. He's like, well, at, at least, least you have underwear. But Jason, let me tell you, you know what he used to do? What? He take whatever jacket he don't like it. No jacket, the sweater. Yeah. And leave it in a classroom. <laughs> And day, uh, every day, every day. I wanted to is, dress myself. Yeah, where is the sweater? I'm like, I don't know. And his father, he used to put band-aid in his finger. Yeah. So to remember, you get your sweater from school. Wait, how does that work if you put band-aid? Like a reminder. A you know, reminder. Like, you know some people tie a string around their fingers yeah. so they don't forget he a put thing. The band-aid, uh, I didn't you know. know. Yeah. He put band-aid in yeah. his finger. So when he see it, I yeah. remember I get my sweater from uh-huh. class. But still so, no sweater. No, but as soon he leaves the door, I catch him, he take it off and throw it in the grass. <laughs> so, 
Wow. Dude, I, I was a stubborn kid. What I wanted to dress stubborn. myself. I wanted very to dress stubborn. myself. But I have to say, I'm very stubborn too. You are, well, I got that from you. Thank yes, you. And I, I and I like. There's times where I like my stubbornness. Yeah. 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 You know? Sometimes yeah. it makes you strong. You it know? does. You don't allow people to tell you what to do. And stubbornness probably made made you. A little bit of stubbornness has probably made you survive those first two years. Yes. Yeah. You know? So the Korean guys embraced you. Yeah. You you were getting – would you say that was the toughest time, those first two years when you were alone and having cookies thrown um, in your face? Honestly, because I, I didn't know – I didn't know um – I didn't know – like I because I, I think I was too young to be like this is this is, this is is not good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at the time it wasn't – yeah, this is life. This is not bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, Did you I, miss your folks? Or miss Taiwan? Yeah, of course, dude. Yeah, yeah. But, but I didn't miss, in the beginning. I didn't know like, oh, I miss Taiwan. It wasn't like that. Yeah. Because um, yeah, before my parents would send me to camps like every summer already. <laughs> I'm just so laughing. Went, You're like, of course, dude. <laughs> 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 it's the most California thing to say. I love it. <laughs> I just pictured you on a surfboard while you yelled at me. <laughs> I had long hair. Was, dude, of course. Dude. Of course, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> <It's> so American. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I tried really hard to assimilate too. I, uh, like that's why like with the tones, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. my spelling and my grammar is so bad, but because I wanted to be friends with everybody and I want people to like me, I always like make sure because people did didn't really care or hung out with fobs. Yeah. And I was. I was, I was a fob too. Fob means fresh, fresh off, off the boat. boat. Yeah. Like you what, just what, came. What's that it, It's fresh off the boat. They oh, used to call anybody that was an fob? immigrant, they called them a fob. Oh. Even though most of us came in planes. But you know, I'm still fob, but I like myself. <laughs> yeah. You know, who give a damn? Yeah. If you like me, I'm, his, I'm not going to change. In right? Australia, they said I love wogs. you. I love you. <laughs> you know, because I can't change. I came, I was 27 years old. Yeah. Yeah, right. And I can't change so much. And I said, that was him. If you like me, you accept it. Yeah. And that's why I said, what, flop? <laughs> we like being flop. Yeah. Let's take that word back. Yeah, flop. Yeah, we could take it back and it'll be our word. Oh, like, okay. what's up, my fob? Oh, no, fob. <laughs> Can you spell it for me? It's F- just F-O-B. Oh, fob. It's not a great phrase, but it's yeah, good to know but what I, it is. I, I need the information, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, uh, you know, in uh, in Australia, oddly, they called me uh, wog. What is that? It's What's without that green card or something like oh, that. What? Wog. Yeah, so they have a wog over there and then a fob. Over here, fresh yeah. off boat. Over there is without See, green card. that's something I learned today. First green you know, something, just, yeah. You know. But it's uh, immigration also. It's not easy. Oh, no. Uh, you go through a lot. You know what yeah. it is? I, I think in our reptilian brain, in, the, in our caveman brain, there's a study that was done about babies who've never been outdoors. Never, ever, ever. They were born in a hospital and then brought to their home. Those babies would have night <clears> – if they had nightmares – they would in the nightmare they they would talk about teeth seeing sharp teeth mm-hmm. they're like well where did these babies why are these babies having nightmares about animals with sharp teeth and it's because it was in their reptilian brain when we were cave people we were afraid of animals with sharp teeth mm-hmm. and it's still in our program no way dude yeah dude wow. even as babies it's still in our programming and 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 i think because of that i think some of this fear of immigrants is just a fear of unknown yeah. of an unknown tribe yeah you know what i mean what kind? outsiders yeah you know out, literally the word they give us is alien Al- yeah. alien i hate it it means not human yeah i hate it's it. a terrible i th- if, if, if there's human. anything that should be taken away as a racial slur is calling another human being an alien yeah. unless you're talking about et you're asking for a fight yeah <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean yeah. et was a i guy. agree yeah i mean we're all human Exactly, but that's what it is. Talk about dehumanize the like. Yeah. How how much more blunt can you be in an effort to dehumanize someone than yeah. to call them something that's not human? Hey, listen. In a hospital, you take uh, blood, and you don't know the, uh, blood trans. You don't. Yeah. You don't know American, exactly. Korean, hey. Filipino, and your body take it. Yeah. That's that's a great thing, you know. Because we're you all don't the same. Know whose blood this? We're, that's the one thing. It's your yeah. type, but you don't know yeah. what nationality. We, we are all related. Yeah, we're, we're all related. related. If every if you really want to do a twenty three and me, look to your left, look to your right. Oh my God, we're related. Yeah, yeah. we are. Yeah. That's yeah. the best twenty three and me. Yeah. It's like we we're. we're 
What's well, his name, man? Uh, that's Alex. I think, Alex, I think he related to me because of he, course left, he, is. Yeah. he left with me, not at me. <laughs> when I said, they like it or not, uh, you have to love me this way. And I like his way, you know, so mm. I connect with him because sure. I felt he... He loved me for that, you yeah. know. So mm. life, it's it's great. Yeah, it is. It's uh, nice when you. It, it's nice too when you get to a yeah. point in in America or immigrating anywhere, or even it, when you're in your school where people you start seeing people and they start seeing you and getting you. I think sense of humor is a really personal thing to connect with. Yeah. Like I, there's this, there's this Hunter S. Thompson quote where he says, I don't believe the truth has ever been told between the hours of nine and five. And I think humor is a really big after five thing. Mm. And like, if, if I meet someone nine to five and they're like, Oh, you work in marketing. I work in marketing. We might be friends on a scale of one to 10, maybe like a three. But if I meet someone after five and they go, Oh, you you love the Lakers. I love the Lakers. It's more emotional. Yeah. And and mm. on a scale of one to ten, it's more like a five than a three. You know, it's more and, relaxed. And, and I think when you share a laugh, yeah. When you share a sense of humor, or especially if it's both quirky, I, I, it's a really bonding thing. It yeah. is, man. Yeah. yeah. Did that happen to you after you started? Did you did you find your tribe after you got to America after getting picked on and stuff? Well, Co Koreans mostly. Mm. Yeah, because I couldn't really connect with like other i want them to like me but there isn't like i never connected like bonded yeah with other race but because i'm learning about that's so, like their culture yeah dude i, I it's dress, so weird too because you didn't even know what koreans were when you were in taiwan no like i hear i hear maybe once maybe like yeah. or not like i hear them but it's always just like in one year out the other because yeah. what's that i gotta do with me you know what yeah. I mean? yeah but what you were saying earlier about the um the the, the 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 all human and tribe thing is like uh but I, I would just i always think like well what what um like what sorry i have a I sometimes do this you got a brain fire i got a brain that's fire. okay <laughs> no but it happens okay. but what um we we're talking about like laughter connecting people or um I was talking about how the Koreans embracing you must have been such an interesting okay. feeling yeah. because you didn't even know what Koreans were. Now, yeah. here's the funny thing. Out, because America is this island, I think to the, to the, out, to the other kids, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, an Asian kid got, a, got accepted by other Asian kids. Yeah. But you're like, that's a culture I've never even met before. Yeah. And now yeah. they've embraced you. Yeah. And, and it's a culture that's completely different than your culture. Right. They're not the same in any way. Yeah. But, and nobody cared. But that, yeah. that's what I was trying to say. Like, um, like you know how oh, you were saying like the words, like, you know, mm -hmm. the alien, the, the, the words. And I, I, yeah. and I was saying that, like, we care a lot, like right now, about how we communicate with each other, you know. But um, I feel like there's so many, like, bigger like issue issues like people actually d dying like in other parts of the world yeah it's on the news but it doesn't get views or hits yeah. they just it's just like a it but is, like a one thing. word that is like dude alien or like the mm -hmm. lgbt community dude like millions and it's yeah so, but then that actual so what is more important you here's, know what I mean? here's yeah. it's so funny that you say that there's a really interesting guy who's an economist actually mm -hmm. but he he writes a lot about social psychology uh -huh. and he wrote this thing called the empathetic society a lot of people think that technology is making us less human yeah. he argues that it's the opposite mm. and here's why when 9 11 happened yeah. he said you could draw like a map of people that needed to see a therapist yeah. who were emotionally distraught the closer you were to new york Work, the the more people had to go see therapists right. and it, it was less and less and less as you went away from new york out west right so it was almost like a stone hitting a lake and then a rippling outward uh -huh. in hawaii almost nobody had to see a therapist and i bet you the opposite see? happened when pearl harbor happened because those people quote unquote felt far away but a lot of people argued that because of social media yeah you can make people who feel far away feel closer that's awesome man. so so what happened like after the earthquake in japan yeah and in the dominican or in haiti and the dominican republic because of them uh because technology was already present and social media was already present yeah there were more donations and more people getting involved and more people trying to help than ever before in history so it shows you that we technology can connect us again. Yes. Because 
what he argued is that we are we are pack animals. Mm. When you yawn, I yawn. Yeah. When if I walk into a group of friends that are laughing, I'll start laughing and then I'll say, "What's so funny?" Yeah. We yeah. Mi- we mimic each other. You know <laughs> what I mean? True. Even if yeah. I'm Very full cool. and I watch somebody else eating, I get thirsty. Beer ads do that. If I'm watching another guy drink a beer, I get thirsty. Yes. Yeah. It's because we are pack animals. We're designed to be together in a group, and <sighs> we're wow. so we are soft wired. Our brains are wired for empathy. We're so supposed to be kind to each other we're supposed to be loving to each other but all the false behaviors greed uh power all that stuff is added onto us that shit's not real yeah that's not the way we're supposed to behave that's people we're designed to to be to to function in groups of 200 what do you mean what do you mean added on to us like for example we're designed to be in groups of 200 right after 200 we fall apart yeah. We don't follow those leaders. Anybody that's been in a company that's grown bigger than 200, they go, oh, the culture's gone. Mm. Right? And, and the friendships aren't there. The camaraderie isn't there. All of a sudden, people are stealing things for the first time. Right. Because o- over 200 bad th- people can hide and do things like that. Right. So, how did society figure out a way to control a huge population of people? Mm-hmm. They created shared fiction. And shared fiction is like religion. The idea of a country, the idea of laws, those things aren't real. The idea, like whenever people say, God bless America, I go, you know what God would say? If you heard you say that, he'd say, what's America? Yeah. You just invented that. Mm. That's not real. The real soft wired energy in us is empathy. We're supposed to be together. We're supposed to look at each other's eyes and see ourselves in that other person. That's the way we're supposed to behave. All that other stuff is false. It's, it got layered on, and, and then we have to find our way out of that. And s- some of the ways that we do it is by finding not our given nationality, which is false, but finding our chosen nationality, which is real. Mm-hmm. Telling me I'm Egyptian – what is Egyptian? Tell me I'm American. What's American? But when I found comedy and found people who grew up like me, who think like me, who feel like me, that's a real tribe. Yeah. Those yeah. are, we, I found my tribe. That's, re, that's real. You know what I mean? I'll say this one last thing. Mm. My dad, <clears throat> when he had cancer, I used to, you know, joke around with him with chemotherapy when he, when he was going to do chemotherapy. And I met a black guy there who yeah. didn't have a lot of family, who was always alone. And he liked us because we were Egyptian. And then towards the towards the end, after my dad passed away, he was talking to me. He said, you know, you and your dad got me conf- got me dizzy. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, all my life I've thought of myself as an African-American. I'm a black man. And when I looked at other black people in a crowded room, I'd acknowledge him with a head nod because they, they knew the source of my greatest pain was being black and they're black. So they understood the source of my greatest pain. But then I got cancer and my greatest pain wasn't being black anymore. My greatest pain was being... Uh, uh, was having cancer. So for the first time in my life, I didn't feel like an African American. I felt like a cancer American. And I'm like, oh shit, cancer American is real. African American is is fake. It's just there's no such thing as white. There's no such thing as black. There's no. We're all the same. Yeah. yeah. But this this shared fiction about country. It's just, John Lennon had it right. The religion and get rid of religion. Get rid yeah. of countries. Just we're all the same. Amazing. But when 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 that African American man said that said I'm a cancer American, so you're more my brother than somebody else my skin color. I was like, wow. I still remember this guy face yeah. because yeah. he used to sit with us in the same room and chemo. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. But, and it, it changed my perspective on yes, life, on, yeah. on what it means to, to have a nationality. Like you are my brother because yeah. we're comics and, and we have the same dream and we have very similar childhood experiences. You know what I mean? Yeah. The thing that made you a comic is the thing that made me a comic. Mm. And, and, and so you know my feelings more than a lot of people would. You connect yeah. more yeah. with him. That's why, that's why immigrant, that's why like I, I, a lot of the times I do want to connect with, like what you were saying, there's no white, there's no black. I do want to connect with them more, but I just don't speak the way they do or have a similar yeah. Yeah. upbringing, but I want to, but it's just harder for me yeah. and I'm still learning how, how yeah. to do that. But it's true when you have a similar, yeah, it, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Now I went on this big rant. Uh, what was your best time? What's been your best time in the States? Your happiest time? My happiest times. My happiest times. I don't know. This may sound cheesy. I, but I, I, honestly, like just because how I, how I grew up and stuff, I, was, I never felt I was good enough. I always wanted to like, I like look 
my because my dad's because you know immigrants they're always like for the future is never now yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. never yolo it's always like later <laughs> yeah yeah lay, lay low <laughs> there's lay, no lay, yolo low. in other countries yeah. you're no, right it's late it's just later everything for the future right yeah so i never even lived in the moment i figure out the moment thing like after college and i started to like wanted i don't even know what the moment you just do the work but so that i think the happiest time is probably now even if there's ups and downs right it's on. just like now i get to you don't get to chase your dream in taiwan yeah, yeah. like you could ch- there's small but like it's not like the um i know it's um, not america but because america this country has like it, endless opportunities you know what yeah, i mean 100 percent. and the culture and the government they, they're not restricted like china north korea yeah. so here i feel like i'm living the your dream dream i love it for my family and i think that's the even they sometimes don't don't want it i feel like like i'm still doing that for yeah. all of us and yeah taiwan I 100 like percent. i mean listen like it, to, to chase you I am really excited to, to when to hear you say that because there's been a few other comics that have been on here and they say right now. And mm-hmm. I love hearing that because this is not an easy business. Mm-hmm. You don't make a lot of money. You do know. doubt yourself a lot. There isn't health care. And you you doubt yourself so much. But if you stop and take a breath and just pause, you go, this is the happiest I've ever been. Mm-hmm. It's the happiest I've because ever been. You because you achieve your dream. You because, work listen, for your dream. Coming to America and not chasing a dream is like going to McDonald's and not ordering the Big exactly. Mac. Exactly. This yeah. is what this country is about. No French fries. Dude, this yeah. is what it's about. Yeah. It's the th- th- America is all about pursuit of happiness. I agree. And you owe it to yourself to find out what makes you happy. It doesn't have to be a career. It no. doesn't have to be anything. But you should pay attention to what makes you happy and you yes. should chase that. It's important to be happy. We don't have a lot of time on this planet. Because yeah. some people don't even get the opportunity yeah. to chase. They yeah. have to just do yeah. their thing. Like, you know, I was saying like how I grew up. You don't most, see that Most outside. people. Most people. Exactly. Most people that world. aren't in America. Don't and get that That's the bummer about being a racist. It's not... I, I feel sad for racists. Yeah. Not because... I feel sad for them being mean to other people because by not knowing those other people, uh-huh. they don't love what they have. Exactly. They don't know what they have. They don't, they don't appreciate, they don't appreciate what they it. Have. Yeah. That's why all these racists that are saying, oh, these immigrants are taking my job. Motherfucker, you should be chasing a better job. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. You were born here. But they don't get that perspective. They don't get but they, they don't never know seen it. They don't need it. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. They don't get the yeah. privilege That's to the have irony. That. Yeah. If they would have taken the time to meet immigrants and get to they know those people, so yeah. they, they would have gotten motivated yes. and inspired to do yes. more and, and gone, oh my God, look what these people gave up to be in this country that yeah. I'm lucky enough to call home. Yeah. 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 Positivity, man. But I love hearing that from yeah. you. Yeah, and immigration for anybody, Korean, mm. Egyptian, Indian, anybody, it's a hard hard thing to do very hard very yeah. hard to leave your country your family your friend uh, habit culture everything mm. you Scary. meet people you don't know anything you don't mm. know the language everything so yeah. you learn everything like you just born and if, so. if immigrant was a chosen nationality you know who else would would be in this group not not forget the the geographic part of immigrant the person the behavior yeah. the mentality of yeah. someone who's willing to leave everything they know behind to pursue happiness then everyone in this room Respect. would have a ton in common with the founding fathers of this country. Yes. That That's no one in this country has more in common with the founding fathers than immigrants do. Yeah. That if if the founding fathers were alive today, they'd have they have more in common having lunch with us than with the guys from Duck Dynasty. Cuz they, <laughs> they came from yeah. somewhere else. Cuz they came from well. somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. That, yeah. They'd be on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right? They but would. But we all I think even everybody immigrant here. Everybody. Yeah. Who's your grandfather? You know, yeah. I'm sure they're coming somewhere. 100%. This is America for everyone. Well, listen, we've had such a great okay. conversation. We're yeah. running out of time. Okay, yeah. But listen, so but I want you, fun. one, I hope to God you are super proud of yourself because I'm super proud of you. I, I think you've done it. Oh, thank a, you, man. That's you, really nice. You're, you're you're doing so great, dude. And uh, I'm, I am I love watching you shine. You're performing at the Cellar in Vegas. You're, you do, are, don't you have a uh, tour coming up in Tennessee? 
You got yeah, this, up in Tennessee? this week. Right on. So yeah. keep doing what you're doing, dude. You too, and, man. Uh, I bro, see you everywhere, too. I know. I know. Dude, dude I, hey, we're going to yeah. get matching Ferraris. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm really proud of you, and I, I hope that you take a minute to be proud of yourself, too, because what you're doing is special. Yes, sure. Oh, you know? thank you, man. And uh, do you want to plug anything before uh, for the listeners? We've got awesome, awesome listeners. I just want to say that I'm um, I'm thankful that to be on this, to have this experience, man. Oh, good, and I'm every glad. time I'm, I'm with you, seriously, you you always rub like positivity. I'm glad. Dude. So I'm always like happy to see you. Thanks, dude. I'm yeah. always happy to see you too. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a huge That's fan. Just I'm wanna, a huge fan. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, really, dude. really Thanks appreciate for being it. here. You're the man. Thank you. Okay. All right, Good luck. Thank you. What about you want to plug your plug your social? Yeah, or my something social like that? is uh, please um, follow me. I really need followers. Yeah, we'll plug it. <laughs> it's uh, uh, at Jason <laughs> Jason Cheney C H E N Y Jason Cheney. Everything. Facebook. Um, Instagram and website and my tour dates is there too. Right on. So please follow. He's me. not Chinese. <laughs> He's Taiwan. <laughs> Taiwan. I will be first one to follow you, baby. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, baby. You got nice yes. teeth too. <laughs> hey that guys, awesome. thank you so much for listening. Uh, for fans in or near Boston, my mom and I are going to be at the Women in Comedy Festival, sponsored by HBO. Uh, on May fourth, we're going to be performing at the Comedy Studio in uh, Cambridge, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we're going to uh, have a live recording from the Comedy Studio uh, for fans of comedy that want to see me doing a live comedy go to tamarkatan.com uh or tamar at tamarkat on instagram and mom what's your instagram handle kitty katan k-i-t-y katan k-a-t-t-a-n thanks so much for listening guys we'll see you next time bye-bye bye-bye